Suns podcast. I'm Lindsay. That's Gerald. That's Flex. That's Espo. And guys, it is Flavoring Fridays. Shout out to OG's Brands, the official sponsor of Flavoring Fridays. Head on over to ogsbrands.com to see their full lineup, including their two newest gummies, the OG's Naturals and the Big OG's, and to find out where you can purchase. Did you know my nickname used to be the Big OG? I don't think that's true. No. (laughs) You was the Big OG? Who, Who named you that? I did just mm. now. About right. I'm like Shaq. I self-appoint a million nicknames for myself. <laughs> Every time you and Saul are like, somebody used to call me that. I'm like, who? <laughs> who? I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm the big Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, it's been a busy 24 to 36 hours here. How are you feeling? You okay? You hanging Ooh, in there, Gerald? I'm running on fumes. I'm on fumes. Bore, I, bore. I feel like I've never left this chair. <laughs> I don't like... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I you barely did. Yeah. You barely did. What is this, our third show in like 26 this hours? This is my fifth yeah. show in 26 oh, hours, and I appeared on two other One, two, things. Three, four, four, five. Five. Yeah, minus five, two yeah. in the last, yeah, or I whatever. Got, I got like strict that. orders after this show when I get home. Oh, What's yeah. That? Like, pfft. Leave me alone. <laughs> don't call. <laughs> don't don't call text. Me, don't don't text ask for me. Or... Don't even think about yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. The only one that can chill with me today is my dog, Raj. There you go. You can lay in the bed with me, but yeah. But until <laughs> that point in time in the day, we do have a lot of stuff for you guys. Uh, we did get to hear from the two newest members of the Phoenix Suns and general manager James Jones today um, about the trade deadline. And first and foremost, we'll start with James Jones. Here's what he had to say about how he thinks they did. Great. Uh, I, I knew that we wanted to, to come out of it with uh, a player that could help us in the playoffs. This is all about getting better and, and, and getting ready to run that race of the postseason and, and looking at what, what our options were. Uh, Royce and, and, and David provided us something that we desperately needed. Some more physicality, uh, some, some toughness defensively, and then the shooting is, is something that we always value. Yeah. So he was aware of a lot of the things that I think we've been seeing in terms of the rebounding, in terms of the need for a more defensive minded guy, um, just that physicality that both of these guys bring to the table. Um, I think it addressed some very specific concerns for this group, didn't address all of them. But like we said, you're not going to be able to do that with the trade resources that they had available. So um, I, I like what Royce O'Ne- O'Neal brings to the table. And I think David Roddy, I, I'm not projecting him to play a, a bunch, but mm-hmm. he's a young guy and maybe he can carve out a place for himself because of those things he brings to the table. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they nailed it. I mean, when you have a team that's as top heavy as this team is, mm-hmm. you you got to you gotta fill the edges. You're not looking for that big bang move, that mega move. You've done that already. You need those guys that are going to do the dirty stuff, do the dirty work. Royce fits that to a T. Also, when you trade for Kevin Durant, you lose a ton of assets. You lose a lot, a lot of draft capital. So you got to be creative with how you kind of get that capital back. Guy like David Roddy fits right into that. A former first round pick that still got a lot of basketball ahead of him. He's a project and he's going to go to work now with some legends, some goats. He's mm-hmm. going to learn from the best. And so when you take a guy in that spot, you can't find a better situation than going to work with that type of talent around you if you're trying to develop somebody. So I think they did a little bit of everything, and they they, they saved some capital and some flexibility for down the road by not being able to, by not trading Nasir, keeping two picks, mm-hmm. and some of those other things. So and I and flexibility I, with the bio market and the yes, two open spots and the two too. open spots. Correct. So I think they nailed everything. This is a great trade deadline from my perspective. Yeah, usually you get a. You know, just GM speak in a lot of this, but I felt like he was being genuine and we knew we really did know what our weakness was and, and that he feels that Royce fits it. Now he says at the beginning, you know, we needed to get a guy Mm. to help. 
and then he the kind of corrected yeah. himself with bringing up Roddy in it as well. But we know that yesterday was about Royce O'Neal, yeah. and that was about the playoffs I- itself. And I feel like they accomplished what they needed to. Mm-hmm. Like there was when you had the assets you did, uh, James made a, an impressive move to be able to get a guy that you hope fills those needs as a more reliable uh, a Kogi in some ways. I think he's more of the uh, Jay Crowder uh, mold where he comes in and he can help you on the defensive end. He'll give you a little toughness. He can hit those threes. Uh, he's got a little swagger to him. We'll hear that in a little while. And, mm-hmm. and I like I like the move from those standpoints. So. Yeah, and that's no shade to Roddy either. It just, you know, we it is what it is. We, he's a younger guy. He's got room to develop, but he's not a seasoned vet no. who can be trusted yet in the playoffs. But yeah. that doesn't mean that he doesn't have potential. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, but James Jones did talk a little bit more about Royce O'Neal and how he'll fit in with this squad. Uh, it'll be seamless. Uh, you just have to look at his his track record. He's played with some really good players on some really good teams, and he's been instrumental in their success. And uh, he's fearless. Like that's that's what this is about. We're going into a a Western Conference playoff um, race that is daunting, but it's fun. And if you're a competitor, you look forward to it. And luckily for us, we've been able to add a, a guy in Royce who who looks forward to that challenge. Fearless. Yeah. That's what you're going to need in this Western Conference because this is not going to be an easy last two months of the regular season because that everybody is really tightly packed. If you want a home court spot, it's going to be a battle to get there. And then we know it's going to be a gauntlet in, in the playoffs. And you can't have a guy that at times is timid. And a lot of, you know, a lot of the guys that they had that they sent out in this deal were guys that could show flashes, but always felt like if the moment got too big, I don't think they were going to be able to perform. Mm -hmm. I don't think you have to worry about that with Royce O'Neal. May he have struggles shooting? Yeah, every guy might have that in the playoffs, but I don't think it's going to be the pressure of the moment. I think it's just going to be the normal ebbs and flows with a guy like Royce. Yeah, Yeah. you said it. I mean, the the streaky shooting can be a concern, and we'll talk a little bit about his game um, because I wrote a new article on his game at gophnx.com. But, like... I, I think that's a very important thing is that it's not like with KBD out there or Uda out there or some of these other guys that are not as playoff tested. That is a real concern with Royce. If he's missing threes, it's because he's just missing three. Just missing yeah. three. Um, and he's been in the playoffs <clears throat> before with really good teams. Um, you know, that Jazz team obviously fell well short of their goals that season, but uh, he, you could tell he's 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 a dog on both ends of the floor, yeah. like especially defensively. And I think he's really looking forward to joining a team mm-hmm. as good as this. Well, and like when you look at some of the guys that we traded for him too, like with Yuta specifically, right? The three was what we were were relying on from him. Yep. With Royce O'Neal, yes, the three is there, but if it's not, there's other things that we can also rely Correct. on him for, which is kind of what was missing with some of the guys at the end of the bench. Um, that ended up getting moved. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, yeah. it's like, yes, at some points in time, that might get taken away from Royce O'Neal, but it doesn't mean that it can't turn to something else that mm-hmm. could be just as valuable. And even if he has like a cold streak, his numbers even out eventually. Like yeah. he, that's the thing about streaky shooters is sometimes you'll miss a lot. Sometimes you'll make a lot, but even with those gaps in between good and bad, hot and cold, like he was still shooting significantly better than Yuta, who was at 32%, yeah. KBD, who was at 31, Chemezi, who was at 29, Jordan Goodwin, who was at like 30. Like he was still at about 37%. Yeah. That's pretty good. And he's going to be getting a lot more open looks with this team, too. A couple of things. Espo, I think you nailed it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I do believe because Jay Crowder was streaky. Mm-hmm. Right, Jay. Jay can get a go on one, and then Jay can go over for fifteen. Like Jay was that type of guy. Um, but you see that when we had Jay Crowder, he answered the bell in a lot of other ways. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, he fits that mold. I will say this: the four guys we sent out, they were trying to become what we need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Royce O'Neal has proven that he is what we need, mm-hmm. and that's the difference. It's it's really that simplistic. You go from guys that are trying to become something to a guy who has already proven that he he can do that. And so it's an upgrade immediately. And, and I think that's why James says it's seamless, because this is a guy that's played uh, 
you know, played at a high level for a long time, uh, played in high stakes games, has playoff experience, and that's exactly what we need. So unfortunately, those guys had a small window mm -hmm. to get there. And some of them were able to perform at a level where we are comfortable saying, OK, we'll, we'll keep a, we'll keep you here. Those guys ran out of time and uh, he went in and he got a guy that's established. So I love the deal. I, I think he brings a dynamic to this team that we were sorely missing and is going to pay dividends down the road. We'll hopefully see it tomorrow. Hopefully. Um, this deal also <coughs> costs a lot of money <coughs> as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. <laughs> for Matt Ishbia, but the good news is he's got deep pockets and he's willing to spend, even though with the new CBA, there's limits on exactly how much we can spend. Uh, but James Jones did talk about the money side of things and what that that's like. No, not at all. You know, his, his, his directive since day one has been, we're here to win championships and uh, we, we chase it. And so if that means spending more money, it's just money. If that means more, more hours and more focus and, and more time, then we spend it, you know, because if we're not chasing the championship, what are we doing? I think I read that it yesterday added about sixty three million in tax. No, it added it? it add there they were at like fifty one million. Well, it added them. about thirteen million. So pushed so them towards that. Yeah, they're like sixty four million. million now, which is which is insane. Like, mm -hmm. I I want to propose something. I think they should give part of that when you go over the apron back to the fans. But that's just me. Wow, if you're gonna have to pay that money. <laughs> Send it. Wow. Where exactly does and it go? Like, since I thought of the idea, it goes, I will go yeah, like ten percent. Please, it goes to the teams that don't pay the tax. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's basically it goes into a pot, and then if you don't you pay the tax, yeah. they divide yeah. it, and you get a fat check. And Robert got a lot of those checks. It's a basketball. <laughs> it's Robert basketball got a lot communism. Of communism right? Right? Oh, that's what it is. Oh, you, I, I will, Just redistribute the wealth. That's what it is. I will yeah. say this: music to my ears. The way yes. he said that, mm -hmm. yo, that was emphatic. He's like, yo, think about what James just said there. Mm -hmm. He said, it's just money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is though. So it's really no, easy to say that. But but you couldn't say that before. <laughs> no. Like he literally sat no, there true. and I mean, you can tell the person that's telling him that is emphatic. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. it's just money, dude. We got a lot of that. They actually mean it. Right. We they mean say it. it this time. Yeah. Where it's not like we'll say it to save face, but behind the scenes. Yeah. Well the You better not. The proof is in the pudding, too, because if you look at the teams that were in the luxury tax before and post trade deadline, Bobby Marks tweeted this out. The Suns are the only one of about 10, 11 teams that were in the luxury tax that actually increased their Added luxury money. tax bill. The others either reduced it by quite a lot or stayed the exact same. Mm -hmm. The Suns added $13 million on it, and I know it's just through one trade, but the willingness to spend and the fact that James Jones said, like, yeah, he didn't hesitate. He's given me the green light still. <laughs> That's encouraging, especially going into this summer when you're going to have to figure out a way to keep Royce O'Neal and Grayson Allen use their bird rights to re-sign these guys, and that's going to come with even more luxury tax bills. Matt Ishbia looks at aprons like DJ Khaled. He's like, another one. Yeah. <laughs> another one. Yeah. Just, he's like, keep adding them because I'm just going to keep blowing past them. Bro, right? Matt, Matt right. got bread behind bread <laughs> behind bread, man. Like, I'm serious, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say bread. Like, mm -hmm. Matt's like, how much? Yeah, top drawer. <laughs> you want a little, more, you want little more James? Sourdough? Yeah, under the bed. <laughs> How much? I got you. Let me know. Top of the closet, dog. We got I mean, more. And that's at his guest house. That ain't even in his real home. <laughs> Listen, right, right. Matt Ishbia got it like that, but I don't think we do. But with our friends over the Arizona Lottery, you could potentially get there. Hey, yo. <laughs> the Arizona Lottery is introducing a unique new ticket and promotion called Arizona Adventures. There are three ways to play and win big with this promotion. So one way, you play Arizona Adventure lottery tickets featuring three iconic landscapes, Picacho Peak, Monument Valley, and Camelback Mountain. Now, these tickets have prizes up to $50,000. You can also check in at geolocated adventures at 10 destinations across the state from Flagstaff to Yuma. Visit azadventure.com for details and directions, or you can enter tickets online for a chance to win a million dollars in cash and Arizona travel prizes. The Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's also about giving back to the state and its community. Sounds like the Phoenix Suns, right? <laughs> take an adventure with the Arizona Lottery. Visit azadventures.com for more information on how you can take an adventure with the Arizona Lottery for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Flex, you ever been on a diet? Uh, no. 
No, I didn't think so. I, as you can look at me, <laughs> yeah. you can tell I have. But you know what? I don't like to give up things I like when I'm on a diet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's tough. It's tough. You know what I, I like? A good beer. Oh. And our friends at Michelob Ultra, yeah. they got it. Just <laughs> what I need. 2.6 carbs, 95 calories in this bad boy. It's, it's a perfect thing for me to still enjoy my beer while being health conscious on my diet. So okay. I love I love this, and they got something new too, Flex, that you might want to try. I mean, I know you're not on a diet, but you still might want to try it. Yeah. It's uh, no, I, I'm rhyming it. I didn't even mean to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mick Ultra Organic Seltzers, their essential collection, made with coconut water and Ooh. real fruit juice. So you know it's always going to have a refreshing, superior taste. Plus, it's only 90 calories, and this is the big one. Mm. Tell me. Zero added sugar. Damn. And as a fat guy, what you got to look at is the sugars <laughs> on there, because that's how you add on more pounds. So <laughs> I, I highly recommend you look at that. So head over to MichelobUltra.com to find out how you can win superior NBA prizes. Not not the inferior kind, the superior <laughs> kind, and to find a Michelob Ultra near you. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. You said coconut water? Coconut water. Damn. Mm -hmm. I'm from the island. I love coconut. Yeah, sure. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys. We also got to hear from Royce O'Neill and David Roddy. We'll start with Royce O'Neill. Here's what he had to say about what he brings to the squad. You know, little things. Uh, all the intangibles. You know, uh, be the dirty, you know, dirty work player. Uh, knock down open shots. You know, try to make my teammates better any way I can. And, you know, learn from them every way. I mean, take us as far as we can. I mean, love it. That's that's what happens when you bring in a guy who's known for physicality for guarding bigger wings. Like he's going to do the dirty work. He's already aware of what his role is going to be, and that's encouraging to hear that he's, you know, whatever this team takes. It's a, it's such a cliche. We hear it from new guys all the time. Um, but to come in here, look at the big three, and be like, yeah, I'm just going to do whatever they need me to do, even if that means, you know, guarding the toughest opponent every night. That's a good thing. Which I'm sure Kevin Durant will. Uh, mm -hmm. Gladly welcome yeah. to this squad where they can maybe rotate every once in a <laughs> while. Sometimes Katie can take a night off of that. Um, but beyond just bringing that physicality and, and doing the dirty work, the fact that he seems to embrace it, yeah. too. Like, that's one of the biggest things that I took away from mm -hmm. uh, hearing him speak today is that he's cool with that. He likes doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest keys because it's one thing to have to do it, to be tasked with that. It's another thing to be like, let me have that. Let me get yeah. that. Yeah. You, I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you happen to know what number he's going to wear? Double zero, I think. Yep. Double zero? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I was going I was going to say. Yeah. Were you not here last night? You did. No, did no. The, I, I did. Only the third guy to <laughs> yeah, do that. Yeah. Nah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that went last in. two days of that long Was week. that literally <laughs> last night? It was last yeah. night. Yeah. That went through one ear out the other, bro. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> uh, no. So I'm, I'm only asking that because, I mean, you nailed it, dog. I, I'm getting Jay Crowder feels mm -hmm. from this dude. And. I thought it'd be savage if he just wore 99. Well, you got another double number. Double number. Mm -hmm. So it's close enough. I mean, really, in the NBA, it's just one number away because you don't go to triple digits. You just cycle back to That's true. double that zero. That is true. Though. Yeah, I, I'm I'm loving everything I'm hearing from, from Royce right now. Um, again, I, I can't help but feel like uh, we might have stumbled onto something. And it, it could be exactly what we needed, mm -hmm. Lens. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to see every I've, I've made a handful of phone calls after the trade. And even before, I told y'all earlier, consistently, glue guy, locker room guy, guy you want to go to war with. That's what I keep hearing. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, man, I, I love that he's in our locker room. I think this team is about to turn it up. Mm -hmm. I do. And like we mentioned earlier, too, when we were hearing what James Jones had to say, so if that three does go away at any given point or time, there are other um, abilities that Royce O'Neal brings to the table, and he spoke about a couple of them. We'll first start with his passing ability. I mean, I'd rather get an assist than a bucket, to be honest. So, uh, I mean, got got a lot of guys in this team that can score. So, I mean, scoring myself and then, you know, just being a playmaker, you know, whenever I'm needed, you know, getting these guys involved and winning as many games we can. Did you see the game last night? Oh, yeah, I watched so it. So you saw that ball moving and you were like. Oh, for sure. I said, I said, I'm going to fit right in. So yeah. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I mean, it, his per 36 over the last two years, he's averaging a little over four uh, assists a game. And look, there's three and D guys and then there's something I like to call garbage men. 
And it sounds derogatory. It's not. It's, it, he feels like a garbage man to me. A guy that's going to, yes, he'll play the defense. He'll shoot that three, but he's going to do every little thing, including the passing. And I think that's an underrated part of his game that could uh, could pay big dividends, right, in this. It is, and Kevin Durant hit the nail on the head when he mentioned that. Uh, he called him an underrated passer last night when we were talking to him about Royce and what he brings to the table. Um, and this is something that I dedicated a whole section to in my article breaking down his game today because it feels like his connectivity is going to be a really – big addition to this group mm -hmm. um like his he's a good screener he can operate in the short roll and things like that but just the way that he's able to grab a rebound and fling a pass like on a wire to a guy that's in transition is going to be huge because this is a team that has increased their their tempo and their pace over the last few weeks um there's a lot of highlights of him driving kicks driving dump offs just from the top of the key just throwing the right chest pass like he throws he zips the ball around where it needs to be. So that sense of urgency, that strength, and, and that asset to his game is going to be a perfect fit with this team, especially with the way that the Suns are starting to move the ball now that their top guys have been healthy. I think he's going to fit right in in that regard. He's just a basketball player, man. Like, he, you look at the film, he's just a basketball player. Not one of those guys that are going to jump out on the stat sheet, but just a, a, a well-rounded basketball player you said the garbage man. The, the, the epitome of the garbage man was the guy I just mentioned, Seth Sabalos, right? Like that was that was his nickname. He would do just all the little things. And, yeah, this guy is going to do all the little things. He's going to embrace it. And I don't buy that the three-point shooting is why we – like we, we got guys that can shoot the rock. He's going to go through stretches where he's not going to shoot the ball great. But there's so much more to his game beyond the three ball. And I, I, I stressed it the other day – well, yesterday – you know, I think his willingness willingness to shoot the three ball is going to operate, you going to open things up for this basketball team because he's going to let it fly, man. He's got confidence in his shot. I know people keep bringing up his field goal percentage, but that's going to mirror his three point shooting because he does a lot of three point shooting. He takes eighty two percent of his <clears throat> shots from the three point range, so that's going to bring your field goal percentage yes. down quite a bit. And the other thing is, like I mentioned yesterday, he takes or he was taking about one and a half pull up threes per game over in Brooklyn. I think that number will come down a little bit here. And yeah. part of it is because he likes to do this thing where he pump fakes when a defender's closing out on him. He'll do one side dribble and shoot. Dribble, shoot. That counts as a pull up three. So he'll need to be a little bit more efficient with that shot. Um, again, this is all in the article as well. But I, I, you're right. He brings more to the table than just his three point ability. And again, the willingness to say, like, you know, they don't need me to score. This team has a lot of scores. Mm -hmm. I'd rather get an assist than a bucket. That's huge for a new guy mm -hmm. coming in that all season has been used to getting a ton of shots in Brooklyn. Yeah. Again, going back to the willingness of this guy to do whatever is necessary and him having the ability to do it as well because that, I think, speaks to, like, his journey within the NBA. He knew that in order to carve out a path for him, he would have to contribute in a multitude of ways and be willing to take a step back in other areas right. that are maybe the more fun or flashy areas mm -hmm. when it comes to the game of basketball. But he's OK with that for the greater good and for self-preservation as well, for having a job and a role within the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he also talked about his defense, which we will all be seeing here shortly. That's what I started my career playing defense um, and then just every year taking a challenge of guarding the best player on all the other team um, learning. And then, you know, I like playing defense and I thrive out there. I, I dedicated a whole section to his defense as well because I was going through <laughs> and watching some of the footage of him. And yes, his days of mobility on the perimeter, lateral quickness, all that stuff, those, those were his best times in Utah. Those are behind him. But he is really strong. And that's why I don't care if you think he's 6'6 six, six or 6'4 six, because he can guard two through four and sometimes even five. He spent a lot of time at the five in Brooklyn this year as well in small ball lineups. He's strong as hell. Yeah. Like I was going through the footage and like there, there's so many clips in there, but like Julius Randle, uh, John Collins, um, legit centers were trying to back him down. Can't do it. Get by him. And he was just standing his ground, stonewalling them and then stripping the ball for their trouble. And he was doing it against point guards too, like Shea, like Drew Holiday, um, you know, those, those aren't every possession, but they can help you in the course of a game and just demoralize your opponent. If you're trying to get to your spots and this guy's like, 
nah, I'm stronger than you and I'm going to hold my ground. <laughs> well, and switchability, I mean, is such yeah. a key mm -hmm. on defense. And now you got a guy that you're comfortable with switching into any of those situations like you're talking about. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to see it. it I know he's not going to be the – best lockdown defender in the league mm -hmm. but it's a hell of a lot better than where they were and that's that was the bar you had to cross or is it better than where we're at yes and i think it's significantly yeah. better defense and he doesn't have to be locked down no he doesn't have to be locked down he's got the ability to guard five positions right Gee, hit him with the number, man. What are we since Christmas in defense? Uh, we've actually, since last night, we've climbed to ninth in defense and efficiency. And, so. be and best in offense. So when you put yeah. another defender. Okay. Mm -hmm. so what, Look at us go. No, listen. <laughs> what, what were we saying from the very beginning? If the Suns were just a middle of the pack defense, mm -hmm. 15 or better, mm -hmm. the offensive firepower was eventually going to unleash itself. Right, and you are not you. You're going to have a good chance to win basketball games. This is a team that, like G said, is best in offense, ninth in defense. They're playing some of the best basketball since Christmas. What is it, seventeen and six? Seventeen and six. Right, seventeen and six. They're twelve and three in the last fifteen. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't want to talk about it, but offensively and defensively, they're playing some of the best basketball in the league. It's only two teams in the league that have a better winning percentage than the Phoenix Suns since Christmas, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The Clippers and the Cavaliers. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. No one has more wins than the Suns mm -hmm. since Christmas in the entire NBA. And so this is almost a two-month window. This isn't two games or two weeks. This is a long stretch in which the Suns are kind of quietly getting it together. And then you add Royce O'Neal. Man. I mean, hey, watch out. <laughs> watch out. Sneaky good. Who would have ever imagined a world where this team could possibly sneak up on people? <laughs> That's what they're Not doing. Me. That's what they're doing. <laughs> and they're embracing it. I will say that on this show. Before I got here, I was having a conversation with someone close to the situation. Mm -hmm. And that came out. That was something they talked about. They say, you know what, Flex? We're embracing walking in and people thinking they're not who we thought they were. Mm -hmm. they're not that good they're embracing going in saying you know what everyone thought we were going to be the hunted we're the hunters mm -hmm. we're walking into arenas trying to chop people down now i think this team is embracing that and i think it's a cool thing to see because for a team that you thought was supposed to be at the top of the league they went through their little hiccup and now they're getting it together and there's a perception that the suns are not real and that they can't keep this up and they're laughing and they're saying, OK, we're rolling into your building. Load up, <laughs> load the hell up because we coming. And so I love I love them being in this spot. It takes the pressure off of them. They could just play basketball and get better every night. I think we're all going to love Royce O'Neal because after this press conference, like he just has really good vibes <laughs> to him. Yeah. And yeah. this last answer that he gave to close it out, Gerald asked him, what he wants all of us to know about him. And his answer was just perfect to me. What? That was one of the best cuts. That was literally the best one. We don't have it. Uh, oh, it was. It, it was, but. Well, uh, wait. okay. Well, my, maybe okay. we'll have to come well, I back do to have that the, one. I do have the direct quote. Go here. ahead. Read it, Gerald, because that's better than nothing. <laughs> he he kind of smiled and he goes, Royce O'Neal, he's going to bring it every day with his own swag. And coolest guy y'all might meet. <laughs> which, which he fits perfectly into the anti-hero basketball club. Yeah. He's got that swagger. He's he's not he doesn't care what you think. He's mm. gonna tell you that that he's the man and he's gonna go out there and show it to you on the court. I love where this team is mentally right now. Mm -hmm. Coolest I guy you ever meet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love I love that you went third person too, right? It well, was I, so cute. It was. But to be fair, I did phrase the question, what do Suns fans need to know about Royce O'Neal? So I kind of handed Still him the Still went third baton. person. He did. Yeah, I it love great. it. But I, I presented it in a third person way. I was kind of hoping he would take the bait, and he did. So he that's did, great. and it was absolutely uh, perfect. Do we have the one about his potential debut? Yeah. Let's hear that one. Uh, I mean, I think that's the plan. You know, it's first day where I got to do play tomorrow. If I played today, you know, if I could have got here yesterday, I wouldn't have played. But, uh, you know, just, you know, whenever I'm called, step up and be ready. He's ready. Let's go, He's excited. Man. Yeah, Let's he said, go. He said it's just me and my dog. 
Yeah. And my dog's been living in Texas. Yeah. So <laughs> he was like, I, I, basketball is his life. You know, mm-hmm. he said he plays Call of Duty too, which means a fit in the locker room. Fit right and in. He's tweeted yeah. about Hooters too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're good Weirdest to go, thing. you guys. That, that Hooters tweeting from the early <laughs> 2010s, this entire team did it. They're like, oh. so, uh, but yeah, I, I just, I love the attitude. Uh, I love that he just is like, I play basketball. I want to mm-hmm. play basketball. <clears throat> I will play basketball tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I want to play right now. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, no, nah, I'm I'm super excited. I mean, I, I I get the impression he is gonna play tomorrow. And I I just I can't wait to see the juice. They had juice yesterday, guys. Mm-hmm. Like this team has some juice. It's almost like we know something y'all don't know. That's what it felt like to me. Y'all got bamboozled. We know something y'all don't know. We're damn good. We're getting better. And the big homie Royce, the coolest guy you'll ever know, is coming to town. Damn, boy, I can't wait for tomorrow. Can we? Can we? Can we play tomorrow right now? I no, feel like I Royce. No, we all need it now. We all need it now. Forget, Forget the restrictions. Load it up, man. Let's play right now. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's hear a little bit from David Roddy here. He talked about his physicality and slotting in with the team. It'll slide in seamless, I would say. Um, you know, again, uh, I'm a physical player, and uh, you know, I love to compete too. So both offensively and defensively. So, um, you know, I think that's something that's really going to kind of show here. And I'm just excited to to learn more and, and really just get out on the court. Big body Roddy. Big body Roddy. Body yeah. Roddy. We got to get a shirt. We do. I, I had asked if we need to have a song set to body that song. That's but... what I said, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do think uh, I, I had asked him about his driving ability. I think he ranks in like the 70th percentile and drives per 75 possession so he likes to put his head down get yeah. in the lane play with that physicality and on a team like this again i, I don't know that he's going to crack the rotation no. this year he's a new guy he's second year in the league he was just getting comfortable in memphis and now it's a whole new set of teammates whole new system terminology all that stuff so i think the odds are stacked against him but maybe next year he's under team control for a while and i think that ability to play with physicality is going to be something that can stand out that driving ability they need guys that can put pressure on the rim because a lot of their guys will shoot threes they'll shoot mid-range shots but rim pressure is still an area where this team can improve so hopefully if he gets time to develop he will uh i know that they like him a lot in terms of the person that he is and they you know called him multiple times a winner so yeah to put it in simpler simple terms for me he's the ish wayne right type again like i I hate comparing guys to He's the body the previous type. guys, but yeah, <laughs> like just type, that, yeah. just that, you know, guy, <laughs> guy with that, he's going to hit you hard. He's going to do those things. And, uh, and I like taking a flyer on, on a younger guy, like we talked about yesterday, because you're going to have to get creative how to get those guys in the building. Mm-hmm. And this seemed like a pretty good way to do it. Yeah. I, I like, I like Roddy. I mean, he's a project. He's not going to do anything for us this year. Like you said, second year in the league. You got to try to work with these projects when you don't have draft capital. So this is the type of guy you take a swing on. Um, I went back and dove into his tape, and I do agree. He's got a little Ish Wayne right in his game body type for sure. Um, He's just a young guy that I think has not figured out the in-betweens of the NBA yet. Mm -hmm. He likes to drive. I like his rotation. I like his form on his shot. When I dove, dove deep into the tape, I saw a guy that, is struggling because of shot selection. There's a lot of shots that he takes. And when I say in between, sometimes you catch the ball and you have that in between spot where you have just enough time to shoot, Mm -hmm. but you can also get a pump fake in and drive. And I think his, his willingness to want to drive sometimes hurts his three point shot because he'll decide in the mental, I'm going to pump fake and drive and then change his mind. And it becomes more of a contested shot. And so I saw a lot of that on his tape. Shots that I think if if he's wide open, he'll make. Shots that he took that he missed because he was just in that in-between and that half a second where you got to be precise and he wasn't. But he's young. He's second year in the league. He'll figure that out. And, and going in the gym and playing with the caliber of players he's going to be playing with, mm-hmm. you can learn that. So this is a project. This is a guy. But tools-wise, again, 6'4", 255, Good mechanics on his jump shot, likes to drive, plays with physicality, and is a good character. It's a lot of good things to work with. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of bleed, you know, you bleed into that, water that seed, and see where it goes. So I, I like the move. And he's super excited to be on a team with the Suns Big Three with KD, Book, Bradley Beal, 
and to just soak it all in and learn from them. Here's what he had to say about that. Yeah, it just gives more opportunity to learn. Um, you know, again, those those three guys are are, you know, elite players and some of the best in the world. So, um, you know, for me to, you know, come in and really just try to learn from them as much as possible and, and really just try to help them uh, make their job easier. Yeah. So this was like a common theme throughout the entire conversation with him this morning, just how excited he is, how open and and uh, thrilled he is to be able to pick the brains of all these guys that he is around now and uh, see what they do behind the scenes and just fully soak all of that in. Yeah. I mean, he's, it's his second year in the mm-hmm. league, and he's going from a team that's been battered with injuries where yeah. he was finally starting to play, but they were losing a lot to a title contender. So, again, in terms of playoff rotation, I don't see him being a part of that. But, like, Frank Vogel has done his due diligence on every player on the roster so far this season. He's definitely going to do that with Roddy. And it'll be interesting to see what he's able to show us on both ends because he is – Burly, he's a strong dude, uh, yeah. and he does bring some things to the table that the Suns could use. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there were some people uh, not excited that Roddy is here, even though he's excited to be here. Our <laughs> friends over at DNVR know him well from his Colorado State days. They had just had this to say. I'm mostly just bummed that David Roddy's a son. Yeah. I know. That's just that's a purely vibes uh, killer. Yeah. Just a bummer. Like, I, David Roddy is not really shown much in the nba uh but i just hate it from a, uh, from a vibe perspective you think him and nurkic are going to become really good friends do you think you'll see david roddy at the bar someday stopping by to talk to justin michael on the show and he's gonna be like you guys should see, nurkic is really cool man he's a really cool guy uh, brother he's like you guys friends with espo that guy <laughs> well rocks. see that that would be great Red. i'm fine with that espo is a fantastic oh, human I know. being that was, that was the now I know why this oh, yeah. No, no, no. I need to know. I need to know. Did did vote take a shot at me there? Was that <laughs> was he implying a shot? And guess what? I, I'm glad that he's here, and we're gonna team up to be the big body boys. All right. I'm gonna become such a good friend with Roddy. You guys are gonna hate it in Denver, and that's what I I love it. I love it. it's another thing to get under your skin, boys. Because guess what? There's a storm coming, and it's called the Phoenix Suns, and they're gonna be ready to take that Larry from you. Let's get excited. Roddy's here. And, he's my boy. And Espo told me he's better than Christian Brown. What? Oh, God. I did not say <laughs> no, that. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Denver, I'm joking. I did not say I'm that. I'm joking. He did not say but, that. But the just... big body boys, we can come up to Denver big and celebrate uh, in the summer. That, Don't that you That was worry. totally me making a joke and ad-libbing because I know y'all love y'all some Christian <laughs> Brown. Thank you. So... Total joke, guys. Don't don't send the heavy Listen, hitters out for me. Anytime we can make DNVR a little bit upset, <laughs> I'm on board for it. So welcome. The big body welcome boys makes David me upset. Roddy. Big body boys. <laughs> I'm getting a shirt. This is right a big now. body boys. I like it. That's yeah, right. that, David like Roddy's it. becoming my new best friend on this. Yeah. 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 I think he's going to be in the club with you. Oh, we'll get him some book ones. He and I at the club. I think you in the club. We're going to find that bathtub yeah. book was him. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> there you go. Hilarious. Uh, David is going to be in Espo's inner circle. If you guys are looking for an inner circle to join, might I recommend our friends over at Circle K. Their inner circle is a free membership program where you can save 25 cents per gallon on your first five fill-ups, three cents per gallon every day, and you get a bunch of coupons and you get every six free on a selection of Circle K products as well. You can join inner circle for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. All right, guys, we've got Super Bowl just around uh, the corner, and we're talking about the B-O-W-L, but then also in the show, the Super Bowl B-O-L is also coming up. Uh, but I want to know what you're picking for the Gatorade bath. What color should we go with? Mm. It's orange. Orange? Orange, 100%. It's definitely or, not orange. red. Orange. Why? I'm, I feel like they should always steer clear of red because the red one would stain the most. I feel like it might yeah. be red just because you got Chiefs and Niners and they both have red in their uniforms. Yeah, but that's kind of, isn't that too on the nose then? G, I'm G, taking on G's the nose. G's on to something. Okay. G's on to something. But I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to take a little bit of both y'all thinking. Okay. I, I like the red because mm. it makes sense, but I think it, it will stain. Yeah, and if you have a Super Bowl jersey, like I'm, I'm keeping yeah. that. So Can I'm, we just maybe not completely mess it up? I yeah. mean, I feel like most colors are going to stain if you're wearing white. Most colors well, are going to stain. Worse. Yeah. But red's going to be worse. 
So I'm going with. <laughs> you think they think about that? I'm going with. I don't think they care. Yes. No. I don't think they care. Yes. I'm going with the cool blue, the icy blue. The blue? That okay. icy blue. I got a feeling it's my favorite. Yeah, that's that's I mean, my favorite. Yellow too. is the best. So I'm going I'm going with the Wizard cool blue. The, the, the ice, the world? ice blue. I don't think that stains that much. And uh looks you good know, on camera. You know what I would like to see <laughs> one day, just one day? What? If they went way outside of the box. Like give me like What's the one? Um, like that nasty the, the green one? The cucumber one? Yes, yeah. I love that one. It's delightful. <laughs> it's nasty. No the one keeps that. That's disgusting, you. you guys are... She said her favorite was the yellow one. The so yellow like, one is my favorite. I'm but not the digging that one. one is pretty bomb. Names, come on. But no, they should do one that's way outside of the box. Like the green one or even just like the, the white colored one or whatever. The white one. Yeah. yeah. So that it's not the main four. Nate, How about purple? Nate's purple got Nate's finally got a conspiracy theory involving Ooh. Taylor Swift that I'm buying into. Mm -hmm. He says it's going to be Red Gatorade because that is the name of a Taylor album. All and there together. we go. We've tied it all together. Put okay. your money on red. <laughs> I'm mad at it. Hold on, hold on. Is the name of the album red or yeah, red Gatorade? Red. No, it's, no red. it's just red. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. it so you, no, you, said, you literally said the name of the album is Red, red. Gatorade. No, it's a red. <laughs> oh. I don't listen red. to Taylor Swift, guys. For her B-side, Red, comes, red who, Powerade. Yeah, who, who comes out with a song, hey, Red Gatorade's my new hit here. Well, that's what I All thought right, you said. I, should. I thought red that's Gatorade. what you said. So if you said no, Red you Gatorade, should. it would be Red Gatorade. But just, no. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> hey, man, I don't listen to Taylor. I'm, I, I applaud her. She's a great artist. Don't get All the Swifties on you. Yeah, I ain't trying to do that. All I know is I'm going to tell you how to sign up for the DraftKings Sportsbook app. And then Esso's going to read you guys the disclaimer. All you have to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. You use the code PHNX. New customers bet just $5 on the NBA, and you're going to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with that code PHNX. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction void in ontario bonus best expire 168 hours after issuance see dkng.com slash basketball for eligibility and deposit restrictions terms and responsible gambling resources get stuffed ontario great job okay. espo great job espo. all right guys um let's take a peek at some grades around oh, the league some okay. media members and outlets around the league on what they said about the sun's and their trade deadline moves. So we've got USA Today, a B minus. As for what they say. Yeah, they said the Suns pull, uh, put all their chips in on Kevin Durant and Devin Booker and Bradley Beal. Uh, the offseason moves led to production they needed, uh, but they needed to make a move at the deadline getting Royce O'Neal. will provide solid shooting off the bench and should uh, have better opportunities when on the court with one of Phoenix's top players. So that's a B minus okay. from them. Then we've got the athletic at an A minus. Yeah, not long ago, they say not long ago, O'Neal was traded to the Nets to help out Kevin Durant on the wing. Now, almost two years later, he's being moved to the desert to help uh, KD again. O'Neal isn't a lockdown defender, nor one of the best shooters in the league, but he's really solid at both. He can defend on ball pretty well at times and is good in a help concept off the ball. So very much like what we've been saying for that A minus there. So Nine. the top grade comes from Bleacher Report. It's an A plus. What did they say? They said snagging O'Neal for a second uh, for second round picks and minimum contracts without including one of your two best salary matching assets, Grayson Allen or Nasir Little, is in no uncertain terms a home run for the Suns. So okay. yeah. I We've agree. got CBS Sports with a B plus. A give, give the Suns credit; they move. Or they more or less exhausted all their draft capital on landing Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal, but they got creative in squeezing out a few more assets, knowing that they needed help at the deadline. So, all right, nice. Yahoo had them at a B minus. I forgot to copy Yahoo okay. over. So they said, well, good job, sons. They Nito. did. What about SB Nation? They gave him a B. SB Nation said, O'Neal is still serviceable as a perimeter defender and floor spacer, and that's all Phoenix is really looking for. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, listen, I I'm mad not mad nothing. at these grades. No. I think the grades, the differences, because a lot of the feedback sounded the same. Like it's yeah. not an overwhelming move, but it's a good move that addresses what they need yes. in terms of three and D. I feel like the disparity between the actual grades they gave is just based on how they view what the Suns already oh, have correct. and how much attention they've been paying to this team getting on the right track now that they're healthy. Correct. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Bleach Report gives them an A+. Mm -hmm. I tend to believe Bleach Report believes in the Phoenix Suns then. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. kind of where I'm at with it. If you gave them, a, if it was an A+, you really believe that this Suns team can do some damage. And if you gave them a B-, is you like the move, but you maybe don't believe in the team. So mm -hmm. right. I'm, I'm with you, G. I... I'm somewhere in the middle. We I left mean, one off. Go D ahead. DNVR gave him a, a D minus. <clears throat> so. That yeah, well, makes sense. DNVR <laughs> is a D minus. Oh, no. Whoa. Do not clip that Shots one. Shots uh -oh. fired. Uh -oh. uh, like, uh, <laughs> Maybe I mean, they're, they're all busy with Super Bowl. They won't see it, I promise. Their simple uh -huh. thing was Royce O'Neal <laughs> got burned by Jamal Murray twice for a 50 spot in the bubble. And mm. I say... It's the bubble. Okay, well, right. you also got burned by right. Espo and Lindsay twice in this show. Oh, so. mic drop. Sorry, I'm feeling a little sassy right now. There you go. That was Chelsea. That wasn't Lindsay, I promise. Sure. I, you know, but I, I like <laughs> I, I like that it was so well received. But again, I'm always the pessimist. So it makes me nervous when something's so well received as well. Mm. So Stop doing that, please Espo. Please just work out. Stop doing that, Espo. We're not doing that, baby. Flex, it's all I know how to do. Yeah, we got to change that. I was that born in darkness. You merely adopted it, all right? <laughs> that cup is half full, brother. Brian wants to know who loses more minutes because of this trade. Probably a Kogi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would, like, he was kind of viewed as the defensive stopper, but you basically got a guy who's not as good defensively and can't shoot threes as well as Grayson or Gordon, but can navigate that middle ground there. So, mm -hmm. uh, again, I think the eight-man playoff rotation is our top six with our starting five and Gordon, Royce O'Neal, and then depending on the matchup, Bol Bol or Eubanks, I think you can put Okogi in there if you need him to harass, like, a guard type. Yeah. Like you know, one of those quicker, faster guards that maybe O'Neal will struggle with. But, yeah. 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 Agreed. All right, guys, uh, before we head into our Super Bowl <sighs> topic of the show, I do want to remind you that our friends over at Empire Today want to help you out when it comes to all your flooring needs. With Empire Today, you're going to get shop at home convenience, the right product for your needs, quick and professional installation, and a price match guarantee. My favorite part about Empire Today is their floor visualizer. You can check it out at empiretoday.com slash phnx, but it literally allows you to see what the flooring is going to look like in your home. And I feel like flooring is such a personal and a big decision because it's going to affect everyday life for you that being able to really visualize what it's going to look like in your home to make sure it matches your cabinets, make sure it matches the vibes with the decor in your house that you're going for. That's a huge plus when shopping for new floors. And right now you can schedule a free in-home estimate today and everyone can receive a $350 off discount code when you use the promo code PHNX. <coughs> Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com slash PHNX for all the details. Lindsay, did you know I got something that can help you visualize in a totally different way? Do you? Yeah, it's our friends over at OGs. They, oh, got, snap. they got that big OGs, oh, right? Yeah. It's they 100 do. milligrams sliced into uh, 10 milligram slices there. You'll have a good weekend. I'm just going to tell you that much. Uh, you may know, see things man. you didn't. I don't know uh, about uh, that. It is yeah. Super Bowl weekend. It is. It yeah. is. So you'll uh, you'll enjoy that. They have it. Uh, the natural ones. If you if you are health conscious, you're vegan. Well, guess what? They've got vegan gummies now made with live rosin, available in a sweet clementine flavor. Who doesn't like that. a clementine exactly. orange? So, uh, so also that big OGs comes in uh, raspberry orange, which uh, sounds delightful yeah. as well. So to learn more about OGs gummies and where you can find them, head over to ogsbrands.com. All right, guys. Super Bowl week is about to be over, but we have a few more days as we'll hit it. Boo, 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 boo. Super Bowl week. <laughs> I got something fun for you guys. We saw 
Kevin Durant and Devin Booker looking, or excuse me, Kevin Durant and Bull Bull looking at the iPad last night, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whiteboard. The whiteboard. The, the, the Lindsay's version of a whiteboard. She <laughs> thought it was a whiteboard. The whiteboard. The she whiteboard. went 50 years back in time wow. in basketball. I know, And right? looked at the whiteboard. She called it a whiteboard. Uh, so That's they were looking at it, and we wondered, well, what were they looking at? Well, can we, Eric, let's go through the, uh, the screenshots of... Kevin Durant's dunk here. So let's okay. just progress through these. He went from the top of the key, drove down the lane, took off, and then slammed that bad boy home here. But I think this is what Bull Bull and him were looking at on the iPad. Mm -hmm. Because later in the game, we see this from Bull Bull. Starts at the three-point line, takes a step in, same part of the lane, jumps up, dunks it, comes down, almost identical dunk. Okay. Except, I, oh, go ahead. except what? Except on Kevin Durant's clip, yes. you see the progression. And then on Bow Bowls, you see him at the half court line and, and he takes there. one giant. Well, that's yeah. true. <laughs> and it's then like he dunks. Magic. That's true. It's like magic. No, Literally no, no. But magic. I get what you're saying. But I mean, that's impressive. I mean, okay. The And the screenshots don't do it justice. The NBA uh, would demonetize us if I showed you the actual <laughs> video. Yeah. So I got to show you the pictures. But if you go watch it, and both of those dunks are on Sun, so, uh, on Sun's X, Twitter, whatever the hell you call it, uh, and you watch them, it's eerie how similar yeah. both of those dunks were last night. And we talk a lot about how Katie's mentoring Bull Bull, but in that moment, I was like, Damn. Well, crap. All right. Yeah. That's uh, that's something different there. It was fun. Now we just need to get Bull Bull to do the crossover that made a human being touch oh, grass yeah. like on the basketball <laughs> court because yeah. that was very cruel. But uh, no, like that was that was a cool moment. And like Bull posted it to his Instagram story. It obviously means a lot to him that KD is not only taking the time to show him things and to kind of be that mentor for him. But, um, you know, KD was saying it was something to do with like a foul that he got called for and he felt like he could approach it a different way and maybe get some blocks. And later in the game, he got he had that play where he had the two blocks. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things that's paying off in real time. And it, it's fun to see, you know, the the Jedi Padawan mimic the master. Do we yeah. do we call it? Is he officially Walmart KD? I say that lovingly, <laughs> not in a rude we, way. We do not do that. No, we no, don't do that no, yet. Not even remotely. Do not dollar yet. store KD. Let's, let's no. give it more than like Any 10 day. games for <laughs> oh, KD. Come on. Do KD's backup. Can we no. go with that? <laughs> Yeah, we I mean, that's what he's mid, right? He's, he's no, 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 just simply his backup. Yeah, backup. Up KD. <laughs> Give me that. If you call him anything KD, Walmart, uh, convenience store KD, great, great value. It's probably worth two hundred million dollars. <laughs> so, so no, we're not going there. KD is that good? Oh my goodness, uh, Espo! I think you need to do this super chat from Brian. Oh, I feel like you would be the only one who would be able to do uh. this justice. <laughs> You're the only one that can sing on this show. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. I'm sorry, Miss Gershon. I'm Bobby. <laughs> I don't even know. I am Bobby. Yeah. I, no, I know what it is. I just don't even know. <laughs> I do it again. 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 I am Bo B. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Don't. <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> Never meant to make our chatters cry. I wish I, wish I had had that super or the big OGs before that. <laughs> Woo. Oh, that's great. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think that'll do it for us here on this one. Thank you all for joining us and hanging out with us. It has been a chaotic but very fun last um, 36 hours and some change. Thank you all for being here with us for literally every show that we've done, which feels like a bunch. And don't forget to read all of Gerald's articles. He put a lot of great work into that over at gophnext.com. And while you are over there, <laughs> Brian said I want to refund. Flex, can you do that easy? <laughs> do it, Flex. What is it? How, what is it? it Garthen? I'm sorry, Miss Gerson. Gerson. I'm sorry, Miss Gerson. I am Bo Bill. There we go, baby. Yeah, there we go. Wrap it, wrap it, man. There we go, there we go. I love it. There we go. Um, I was talking about gophnext.com. Gerald's articles are over there. And your opportunity to get tickets to the takeover yes. are also over there. Just click on the events tab. 
It'll get you all the information you need. And if you are a diehard, you get a discount on those as well. So take advantage of that. But our takeover is happening next week on February 14th. And what that is, is we're all going to go to a game together and we're going to hang out and we'll watch the Suns take on the Pistons. So a ticket to the takeover gets you a ticket to the game and also access to pregame festivities with everybody who is going to the game, including all of us. There's going to be food and beverage there. Then we'll all walk over to the game. We'll watch it together. Have a great time and celebrate a Suns win over the Pistons. So don't miss out on that. Yes. I was just Undefeated. called Dollar Store DJ Khaled. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Another Thank you one. all for Another hanging one. with us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to give the show a follow on social at phnx underscore sons. You can follow me at Lindsay Smith AZ. You can follow Gerald at Gerald Borgay. You can follow Flex at Flex from Jersey. And of course, you can follow Espo at Espo. Espo, take us home. A DNVR. The big body boys <laughs> are coming. <laughs> Ahoy, hoy. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor.